On our way to Cuba, we managed a whistle stop one and a half days in Istanbul. We walked through the fascinating streets of the old city, passing enchanting little shops every few meters. Temptation all around. But managed to continue onto our first stop, the Dalmabashi Palace, situated on the European side of the Bosphorus. Home to six sultans, now a museum. Now, I'm not too partial to palaces and museums, but I must admit it was pretty grand. Talking about grand, we then paid a visit to the Grand Bazaar, which is in fact a separate world within Istanbul. It's the oldest and largest historical bazaar in the world, dating back to the 1400s, with 61 covered streets and over 4,000 shops. The market is a huge sensory overload. You just can't take it all in. These narrow roads are generally choked with traffic. Frightening stuff. Our guide led us to this local eating house. Good food and relatively cheap. Then on to the Basilica Cistern, constructed in 400 odd AD. It provided a water filtration system for the great palaces of Constantinople and continued to provide water to the top copy palace into modern times. This underground chamber is capable of holding 80,000 cubic meters of water. That's 80 million liters. The ceiling is supported by a forest of marble columns, one of which is engraved with raised pictures of a hen's eye, slanted branches and tears. Ancient texts suggest that the tears on the column pay tribute to the hundreds of slaves who died during the construction of the cistern. The base blocks of two columns are carved with the visage of Medusa. The Hagia Sophia, when constructed in the 6th century, was considered the world's largest building and an engineering marvel of its time. It's said to have changed the history of architecture. It served as an Eastern Orthodox cathedral and later converted into an Ottoman mosque. In 1935, it was secularized and opened as a museum. There are some incredible mosaics on the walls, dating back to 800 AD. It remained the world's largest cathedral for nearly a thousand years, until Seville Cathedral was completed in the 1500s. On the way across to the Blue Mosque, we stopped to get some roasted chestnuts, which I must admit I had never tasted before. Well, they were not really too awe-inspiring. What a beautiful sight. There's something about those minarets. It was built in 1609. Hand-painted blue tiles adorn the mosque's interior walls. But sadly, once again, when we visited, it was under renovation, so very few blue tiles were evident. The top copy palace served as the main residence and administrative headquarters of the Ottoman sultans in the 15th century. Today it is a large museum and yet again it was a bit of a letdown as much of it was under renovation and not accessible. Then we trammed it down to the spice market. Very similar to the Grand Bazaar, except much smaller. Depends on the weight. You can do the same 
We wanted to buy Turkish Delight, and our guide said this was the shop to buy from. We have the best pine nuts in the world. So we spent quite some time here, buying and joking with the owner, who had been to South Africa and spoke very good English. You again? Aren't you going to leave me alone? God, wherever I go, you're just following me. You're not getting any Turkish lights or apricots, any of these good things. Just across the street was the departure point for Bosphorus cruisers. We boarded just in time for the next cruise. The Galata Tower in the background was used as a watchtower in days gone by. We passed the Dalbamashi Palace that we visited yesterday. Nestled under the left tower of the Bosphorus Bridge is the picturesque Ortakoi Mosque. the Egyptian consulate. The fortifications of the impressive Rumeli Hisami fortress built in the 1400s by the Ottomans. It was used to control military and commercial traffic on the Bosphorus in preparation for the siege of Constantinople. And the Bela Bay Palace. The Maiden's Tower has had many uses over the centuries, but is now a restaurant. We had our last meal in Istanbul at the Pudding Shop, a popular meeting place for beatniks and later on hippies and other travellers in the 1960s. It got its colloquial name as a result of word of mouth from foreign travellers that couldn't pronounce its proper name, but did remember the great selection of puddings sold there, and thus referred to it as the Pudding Shop. And a last stroll through colourful, vibrant sidewalk restaurants and iconic mosques.